started. All right, thanks, Ash. So just like Ash said, everybody, welcome to another Monday night uh, paint night with Michaels. We're so happy to be here. Um, I'm super excited to see Andy paint this sweet little ornament tonight. Um, just like Ash said, I'll be in the comment section moderating all the comments. So if you have any questions for Andy, then you can leave them in the chat and I can either answer them myself or relay those questions over to Andy. Um, and we just wanted to say next week um, on Monday night, we are obviously doing another Michael's paint night and I'm gonna be painting some really sweet and simple to be super fun and they are uh, listed just like you found this class under Michael's community classroom page on uh, michaels.com. So without further ado, Andy, are you ready to get started? I am ready, Emma. Thank you very much. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, we will be painting a uh, vintage a shiny bright ornament tonight. So if we can go ahead and switch to our overhead view, there we go. All right, so we'll be painting this little ornament tonight. And a couple of things that I want to let you all know right before we get started, um, as the uh, phrase goes, we're gonna walk you through this painting and we should be able to do it in quote, just about an hour. Uh, please don't ever hold me to that because chances are it'll take a little longer. Um, and then I want to remind you of one motto that uh, holds true for all of my classes is that you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit which means just kind of roll with um, things as it comes uh, to you uh, through the course of the class. If you don't like what you've done, you can always paint another one. That's the worst thing that can happen. And that's not too bad. Uh, but if you are working along and you feel overwhelmed or like you're running behind because we do uh, work at a, a brisk pace, um, you feel free just to pause your painting and then wait for the class to be posted on michaels.com or on uh, Michael's YouTube channel uh, within 24 to 48 hours. And then you can paint along at your own pace, pausing the video as you go. But let's get a design sketched on our canvas. So what we are going to do is the, our ornament is a very easy shape. It's a circle. And so here's where I placed my circle on the canvas. Um, it's about a thumb width up from the bottom and about two fingers from the left hand side. So go ahead and make a couple of marks on your canvas, a thumb width up from the bottom and about two fingers over from the side. And then, so here's where mine is drawn on my canvas, but I'm going to show you, I just used um, a jar lid that's that round. So I set something down on there that was about that big around and drew that on, or uh, the inside of this roll of tape was just about that same size. So anything that you have that's around, you can use, or you can measure up, you know, about the width of your hand from the bottom to the top, and then you can simply sketch out a circle. And it's easier to paint a circle than it is to try to draw one. So if you just get a nice circle shape on your canvas, and you can go ahead and do that now, I'll give you a, a little bit of time to sketch that circle out. And if you're sketching your circle out, you can, it's sometimes easier to do it in little uh, straight lines instead of trying to draw a round circle. So you end up with a bunch of intersecting lines And I'll show you what I'm doing here. It just gives you a little easier way to kind of draw a circle instead of trying to get it round. You get it there with little straight line segments. All right, so I'm going to give you a minute or so to draw your circle, and then we will uh, draw the little uh, cap for our ornament and our cast shadow on there. So we're going to take care of all of this up front, but we're about a thumb up from the bottom and about two fingers over from the left side of the canvas. And I wouldn't recommend doing an ornament that's much bigger than about three inches across. Otherwise, uh, it's going to lose a lot of its charm. So size and scale does make a difference in a painting like this. Andy, we have 
have a good question from Susan while everyone's uh, drawing their circle. Susan wants to know if I have another similar background already done, completely painted, can I use that? Um, you can that use that. The um, you can do that. Uh, I will be showing you how to use the white of your canvas uh, to your advantage. But if you've already got a background on something, go ahead and use that. Not going to tell you no. It, it's perfectly fine. Just remember, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. All right, so I know um, I'll hold this up so you can see what my circle looks like. And I have taped my canvas panel to a piece of cardboard so that when I paint the background, I don't get paint all over me. I don't like getting paint all over myself, so I uh, try to figure out ways to keep my paint neat or to keep myself neat. And just attaching it to a uh, piece of cardboard really helps. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about another 15 seconds and I think you all will have probably completed your circle. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to imagine that our uh, ornament is orientated or oriented uh, toward the lower left corner of our uh, canvas. So if I were to draw a line diagonally across the canvas from corner to corner, I just want to show you what that line looks like. A line diagonally across from corner to corner. Notice that we're, the next thing we're going to draw is this circle here. And it is not centered on that line. It is below that line. So with just the edge of that circle uh, over that line, I want you to draw another circle about the size of a dime, or maybe just a little bit bigger than a dime. So go ahead and do that and I'll give you a minute to do that. If your circle was split evenly along that diagonal line there, your ornament would have a, a different orientation and that would pull your eye off to the lower left corner of the canvas. But by having it lower, uh, it keeps your eye in the painting because it's not shooting off at a corner. Okay, so we're going to move on in just a moment, but let me hold this up there so you could see where that circle is. Okay, just a little bit more time for that circle. Okay, now let's gonna turn my ornament so it's hanging in, in my mind, hanging right side up. I want to draw two lines that kind of spread out. They're not, uh, they're wider than the circle at the end. So you can see those two lines, one here and one here. And I've got another like semicircular line that's spaced, oh, how far is that? Well, that looks maybe like a half inch from the circle that we drew earlier. And this will make the cap of our ornament. So about a half inch from here to here, and then the sides flare out a little bit. So let's draw our flared out lines and then our uh, portion of the cap that follows this same curve, but about a half inch further down. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, 
And sometimes uh, doing a basic sketch like this is just the worst part of the whole class. But we'll soon have paints and brushes and we'll be moving along with our ornament. So I do wanna let you know that uh, as usual, I left a, um, a color off of our um, uh, supply list this evening. So if you have a bright red or any kind of kind of stop sign red color, we will be needing that in addition to the other colors that were on your supply list. Andy taped the canvas on using a loop of masking tape. <laughs> No, no magic there. You're quick, Andy. Uh, I just happened to look at that and I saw that and I'm like, okay, I can answer that real quick. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to draw our cast shadow on. So let me put this the way our painting looks. So our cast shadow is going to start right here at the, um, where the flat top of our cap uh, rests on the table. And so we're going to put a nice, curved shadow from that point, and it's going to be a nice little curve to the back and swing around. So you've got a nice little curved shadow there. So let's uh, put our curved shadow on our um, canvas. And then we just have two other little lines to draw and we can get some paint out and get going. And it's very fun to paint a super uh, reflective, glossy uh, shape like our ornament. And we'll be talking about some of the finer points of that uh, just before we start putting paint on the canvas. So I'm gonna give you another few seconds to sketch that shadow out there. Okay, the next line that we're going to draw on our canvas is going to start at the edge of the cap and is going to gently curve up the ornament like that. Okay, so it starts right here and gently curves up the ornament just like that. So I'll let you put that on and I'll give you about 30 seconds to do that. And then we'll just have one more line to draw before we start painting. Let's do a quick measurement there. All right, so the next line is going to start about a, where this line tapers down and comes to the edge of the ornament. We're gonna put our finger there and then we're gonna make our mark start here. So about a finger width from where that line met the edge of our ornament, we're going to gently draw on a curved line that's going to come across our ornament. like that. All right, so that gives us our very dark shadow. This gives us our brightest area of the ornament and where our ornament will have its local color and its darker shadow there. All right, so this is everything we need basically to paint our ornament. So we are going to get started right now. And I want you to, for the time being, let's just lay a paper towel over our water basin. So we are not tempted to put our brush in water because you don't need to do that uh, until I tell you to. All right, so I'm going to put out some of my stop sign red color and it could be uh, naphthol crimson, it could be engine red, it could be lipstick red, it can be apple red, it could be cardinal red, it could be any bright red color. 
and it doesn't matter which one you choose. All right, so I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of our bright red color on my brush. Now, we are going to use the white of our canvas to um, kind of lighten our red color because we're going to put some color on and then we are just going to scrub that color into the canvas, letting some of that light canvas color show through. We're gonna put such a small amount of paint on, we will see our canvas shining through. So what I'm going to do is start right along this line and just form that line very quickly in one fell swoop. And then I'm going to just take my brush and not pick up more paint. And I'm going to begin to scrub this color into the ornament, filling in the weave of the canvas and letting that light color shine through. I'll pick up a tiny bit more paint and brush that on and scrub it in. Getting a very light red color. If you've painted it all, you know that light red is very difficult to achieve, but this way, by having the white of our canvas show through, we are able to create a light red that really isn't pinky. It simply is light red because we're basically scrubbing such a thin coat of red on our ornament, we have that light white of the canvas shining through. So just continue to pick up a small amount of paint and I'm forming the outside of the ornament. And then I just simply scrub, scrub, scrub that color on. So that we're basically just tinting our canvas with this red color. Okay, so I've got a pretty even coating of red on there, but it definitely is not um, a solid red color. You can see some of that um, light color from the canvas shining through. Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. In well, reading, uh, so Anne and Emma, do you guys have paintball fights instead of snowball fights? Um, not that we would ever talk <laughs> about. I would not be a winner in a paintball fight. That is for sure. I My know. I don't think. I don't think I would be either. We certainly have a lot of artistic people in this studio, but not many athletic people. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know anybody that would have very good aim. I think we would all no, I agree. All pass out from we would all lose. laughing. Okay. <laughs> so this is what we have so far with our red on our ornament. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of red in this lighter area of our ornament. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up some of our bright red. And I'm going to start over here on the left side of the ornament. And I'm gonna come down to the cap, just like that. And then I'm going to scrub, scrub, scrub this red on. And what I'm going to try to do is to scrub this as far over as I can without picking up any more paint. Okay, so you can see how I stretched that one little brush load of red out as far as I possibly could. So I'll give you a moment to do that.
And I still have not put my brush in water. And you should not be putting your brush in water either. Hopefully at your house, you're listening to some inspirational Christmas music as we're painting tonight. And Andy, maybe for the new people who have never painted with you before, why don't you put your brush in water? Um, well, putting our brush in water is going to do a number of things. It's going to thin our paint down, which we don't need to do because we're using folk art acrylics and they've got such a great, rich, creamy consistency. We want to take advantage of that. It can make your paints much more transparent. And right now we're using the thin application of paint to get the transparency we need. And third, it makes your paint wet and it takes longer for it to dry. And none of those things are things that I'm interested in. So no water in your brush and everything's gonna work out just fine. All right, so I'm going to put some hot pink out on my palette. And if you don't have hot pink, you can use the brightest pink color in your paint box. That's the best idea I can give you. So any super, super bright pink is going to be great for this. All right, so I'm going to pick up this hot pink on my brush and I'm going to start over here on the, um, let's see, it's the right side of the ornament, but I've just turned my ornament upside down. So that's probably throwing you off a little bit. Sorry about that. But we will come right next to that line that we started with on our ornament. And I'm brushing this hot pink on. And about halfway across the ornament, my pink's gonna start to fade out and that's fine. And so then I'll stretch this pink out until it comes down to that first line that we drew from the cap of the ornament over to the edge of the ornament. And Andy, while you're doing that, Michelle wanted to know, did you gesso or prime your canvas before painting tonight? I did not. Um, the canvas that I originally used was one of the um, uh, stretched gallery wrap canvases from Michaels. I can't remember what, um, what the brand name of them are, but it was a very, very good quality uh, gallery wrapped canvas, which you could see the edges are nice and thick. So once the edges are painted, you could hang this on a wall or you could sit it on a bookcase or on a table and use it in a number of different ways. Um, I am painting on a canvas panel tonight and it is not the best quality, but will, um, it will suffice for what we're doing tonight. But generally speaking, I don't apply a coat of gesso to my canvas. I, I figured that's the manufacturer's job to do and it's my job to buy a good quality canvas. All right, so I'm picking up more of my bright pink or my hot pink on one half of the brush and really nothing on the other half of the brush. So I'm going to start again on the right-hand side of my ornament and I'm going to put another layer of pink on with the strongest color right next to that line that went across our ornament. We really are developing a strong reflective line across the ornament. Andy, while you're doing that, can you Go remind ahead. us what color red is tonight? So what color red? Yes. You could use lipstick red, engine red, naphthol crimson, apple red, cardinal red. I'm running out of reds so that I can think of, but any red that's like a nice, bright kind of stop sign red. Okay, is gonna great, be thanks. Yeah, just think you're, if you were picking out primary colors, like a red, yellow, blue, this is the red that you want. All right, I'm going to just make sure, I'm just picking up a little bit more of that pink and over here on the right side of the, uh, ornament in that same area, I'm just dabbing on and patting on a little bit more bright pink. So Andy, uh, Judith has a comment slash question. Okay. 
Uh, she so used cardinal red and magenta pink, and right now she can't see much of a difference. Okay, then she's probably going to need to lighten her magenta pink uh, by mixing it with a little bit of white. You really should be able to see a very distinct color difference between your hot pink and your stop sign red. All right, let me bring that up for an even closer close up. All right, so this is what you can see here that I've got a little bit stronger pink color right in this area. Let me get that up there. It's hard for me to sometimes aim my sample. At, it's above my head now, so it's hard to see. Uh, but stronger pink in this area, and then there's less pink over here in that area. Okay, let me do it with my hand. More pink over here, less pink over here. All right. So I'm going to give you about another minute to do that. And I know that some of you are going to want me to slow down, and I wish I could, but unfortunately, we have that little, that horrible phrase in just about an hour that is always in the way. Uh, I just, you know, no matter what I do, I can't seem to get anything done in just about an hour. But we, we do our best. Did you have a question, Emma? No, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's tough. An hour is tough. All right, so we, I've put out some uh, berry wine or black cherry. I can't remember what I put on the supply list, but I had one of those two colors on there. So whichever color was on the supply list uh, for a very, very dark kind of burgundy color, that's what I've got here on my palette. And it doesn't really matter whether it's berry wine or black cherry, uh, either one of those will work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint in that area of the ornament below the pink section that we've been working on. I'm using a very small amount of paint, but I'm not really trying to scrub this on. This color is dark enough that it will do its job without me really having to scrub it on but putting a small amount of paint on. Okay. So put that on your ornament. It's very funny if you actually start to look at one of these uh, mirrored uh, uh, glass ornaments and you shine a, a kind of a spotlight on it, you will see that there are all sorts of crazy uh, color shapes and reflections and things that you get. And there's not a lot of gently soft shaded areas or transitions from one color to another. You get, that's where you get these kind of really hard uh, reflected lines on your ornaments. And they're just fascinating to look at. Even the uh, ornaments that are decorated with stripes and things like that, they still have these very harsh uh, light and dark uh, separations. Okay, I think everybody's just about caught up with me now, which is great. So let's put just a little bit of pure black on our uh, palette. I still have not put my brush in water. You should not put your brush in water either. I know for some of you that's driving you crazy, but I will wipe my brush out on a shop towel. And to do that, I generally uh, lay my brush on the towel and I pinch the brush between the shop towel and gently pull. That takes the color out of my brush and grooms the brush back to a nice chisel edge. I don't sweep the brush on the shop towel like that to wipe it. If I'm going to lay it down, I'll lay the brush down fold the towel over and then gently pull 
um, the brush through. And that's how I wipe my brush. All right, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the uh, berry wine or black cherry on half the brush. And there's just a dry brush on the other half of the brush. All right, now here we go. I'm going to put in a dark area on my ornament and I've turned my ornament around now. So the uh, little cap is pointed up and I'm going to be working over here on the left side of the ornament. I'll put that dark color right next to that line, a little less than halfway across. And then I'm going to begin to kind of just tap, 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 and pat, pat, pat this darker shading on, letting the color fade away a little bit. I'm not trying to do anything terribly smoothly blended here. I'm just darkening part of this red section of the ornament. Tap, 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 pat, 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 working some of this dark color across the ornament. All right, so now you can see where I've darkened part of the ornament. So I'll give you a moment to do that. And then you can just set your brush down. You don't need to wash it in water or anything crazy like that. All right, I'm gonna turn this back the way the painting is so you can see that the dark is over here on this side of the ornament. And I just wanna remind everyone to, or not remind everyone, but let them know, um, I just gave a little recap of all the folk art paints that Andy will be using tonight in the chat if you have a question about a certain paint. Okay, and again, I, I apologize to everyone that I forgot to put red on the supply list. Duh, that wasn't terribly smart. Um, since we are painting a red ornament, I, I realized that as I set up my little station to, to teach tonight, and I'm like, Huh, I bet I need some red paint to paint that ornament. All right, so I am going to dry my ornament now that I've applied this dark color here. Okay, that's good and dry now. So I'm once again going to pick up some of my dark red color. Uh, it's either berry wine or black cherry. And then I'm going to put a little pure black on that same side of the brush, making that color even darker. And it is very, very dark, almost black. All right, now we are going to create a darker area in this uh, uh, dark red that we just put on there. We're gonna make that even darker. So I'm going to start not quite at the edge and not quite down to the line, but just back up from that line a little bit. And then not quite to the edge of the ornament. And we're gonna tap, 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 and pat, 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 and create a little dark area. And I'm sorry, I have to see what I'm doing here. It is so much easier to paint when you can see what you're doing. <laughs> really, that's weird. You're not kidding. All right, so now you can see where I darkened that. And there is, it doesn't show up that much, but there is still that uh, uh, berry wine or uh, black cherry area right at the edge of the ornament and right next to that pink section. There you can see it now. All right, so I'm glad you can see that. So I did, I did leave a little bit of a gap there. And I'm glad that you all can see that as I virtually have the painting in the lens of the camera, but that's what it takes for you all to see it. And that's perfectly fine with me. All right, so I'm gonna give you a moment to do that. And Andy, while you're giving them a moment, I thought this was funny. Somebody said, it wouldn't be the holidays without a little confusion talking about your 
your mistake oh. of not putting the engine red in the supply list. <laughs> yes, it, I'm, I feel like one of those people that shares the recipe and yeah. always leaves out the secret ingredient. Yeah. I did not mean that was not intentional. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, I know there are some uh, some very good cooks who give out recipes that are lacking that crucial uh, ingredient. All right. So we've got that all done now. So we've got some nice dark colors going on. So the next thing I wanna do is to take that same uh, true burgundy uh, berry wine, black cherry color on one side of the brush with a little bit of black, same thing we just used before. And I'm going to start over here at the bottom of the ornament in that dark section that we painted there. And I'm going to put some of this dark color into that tiny little area. And then we're going to just move this color down along the outside edge of the ornament. So we're just darkening that section a little bit, making sure that it's darker on the bottom. Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. And then I want you to really wipe your brush out. Do not put it in water. Just wipe that brush out really well. Try not to rush you all, but I know we've got um, quite a bit more to do, but we're, we're doing really well. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my hot pink color now and then kind of work that hot pink into the brush. And it should probably turn a not so pretty color on your palette. And that's because we had uh, the berry wine or the black cherry and a little bit of black in our brush. But now we're going to wipe that hot pink out and that'll take some of that dirty pink out with it. And we'll do it a second time. And this is a technique called neutralizing your brush. So I'm basically cleaning the brush with the color that I want to have in my brush. So I've put pink in it twice and I'm wiping that pink out a second time, taking more of the undesirable color with it. And now I have a brush that is fairly full of pink or it will have pink color in it, but it doesn't have any moisture in it. So no water. So I'm going to pick up a very small amount of pink on the corner of my brush. So you could see there that I've got some pink on the corner of my brush, just like that. I'm going to soften that color on my palette a little bit. And then right here uh, in the kind of the left center of the red section of my ornament, I'm going to put that pink color and make a little dab of that. Okay, that's gonna be the center of the highlight on my ornament. So what I'm going to do is take that color and just kind of tickle the edges. So I'm keeping the pink corner of the brush in the center of that highlight and leaving the outside edge that doesn't have any paint on the brush just to soften that color as I move it around my highlight area. So you get a little irregular shape that looks like that. All right, so go ahead and put that pink highlight on your ornament. And while you're putting that little pink highlight on your ornament, I'm going to put a little uh, white out on my palette. This is um, titanium white. All right, now you have a little pink highlight on your ornament and I'm gonna take that same corner of the brush that had pink in it and I'm going to put it into some titanium white and I'm going to soften that on my palette just by bouncing the brush in one spot. So now I have a brush that has some white on one edge and nothing on the other corner or other half of the brush. I'm gonna set this light color down. I'm gonna to try to do this up as high as I can. 
put that color down. And then I'm going to move my brush around that kind of central pivot point. So that I've created a nice soft flare of light color. Okay, give you a moment to do that. Whew, that's really the hard part of this painting. I'm gonna put a little lime green out on my palette. And I'm going to pick up my liner brush that I'm not putting in water. And I'm going to pick up some lime green on my brush. And I might put, just for fun, a little bit of white in with that lime green to make it a slight bit lighter. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is put a green glint on the ornament that's going to cross the pink and red stripe area. So I'm going to hold my liner brush toward the back of the handle so that it's much more um, out of my control, as it were. And I'm going to put that brush down half on and half off and just make a little flick of bright lime green on my ornament. Okay, do that. And then I'm going to put a little flick of bright green uh, on the back edge of my ornament. Like that. Let's get that right up in there so you can see. And then I'm going to trail that off with the bright green just to make a little bit of a line that's right at the edge of the ornament. Now, in reality, this green could be coming from anything in the room. I like to think that it's uh, a reflection of another ornament somewhere. So now we've got uh, two bits of uh, lime green on our ornament. And the next thing I want to do is to put out some yellow ochre on my palette. And I will also put out a little bit of burnt umber at the same time. And if you need to, you can clean out your number 12 flat brush. I'm simply going to pick up another number 12 brush and move on with uh, undercoating the cap of my ornament. So I'm going to paint in the circular uh, area that's lit the top circle of our cap. That's the little circle we drew on earlier. All right, so you see that that's painted in with yellow ochre. Now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my brush that had the yellow ochre in it, and I'm going to stroke uh, one edge of that brush into my burnt umber so that I'm creating a brush that is yellow ochre and burnt umber on one edge. And I'm going to take that burnt umber edge, and I'm going to shade the upper portion of the, the flat portion of the cap. So that's going to be the left side of my circle. And I don't have enough burnt umber on my brush, so I'll pick up a little bit more. Andy, it's always exciting. Go ahead, Emma. I was going to say, it's always exciting watching you paint. When I was listing your supply list in the comments, I was like, ooh, lime green. And I don't see any lime green in there. I'm excited to see where that goes. Well, I appreciate that, Emma. It's, I think when you are watching 
someone else, it's always fun and fascinating. I, I have the same fascination watching some artist I admire, watching them paint. And I always feel like, okay, I wish I could just do what they're doing. And they're like, you can't, it's yeah. not that big a deal. And I feel like I say the same thing to people and it seems like it's a much bigger deal than we try to make it. But they're a darkened uh, part of that circle. So that's what I want you to do now with your burnt umber. And then we're gonna wipe our brush again. And now I feel like I'm starting to rush you all and I, that always bothers me, but the time just uh, doesn't, the clock stops for no man. So we're gonna paint in the, rest of, we're gonna paint in the rest of our cap with yellow ochre. And this is by no uh, stretch of the imagination, a photorealistic ornament. It's just my kind of artistic interpretation of a, an ornament. It's kind of a fun little um, uh, project. Now I'm gonna take burnt umber on my brush, just like I did before on one half of the brush. And I'm going to darken um, the opposite uh, edge of the, uh, the sides of the cap. So I'm gonna start down here where our dark is on our ornament. And I'm just going to stroke some of that dark color across a little bit so that we've darkened part of our cap like that. And Andy, while you're doing that, I'll share with you some compliments. Um, okay. Gypsy said, when you were adding some white, they said that dot of white was like magic. And then um, ba, 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 um, Muthazrini said, I love the way you paint, Andy. And then Susan said, Andy is such an amazing teacher. I always learn so much. Well, thank you, ladies. I, I appreciate that. I always hope that you learn a little something. All right. So in speaking of learning a little something, we're about to learn where to put some additional burnt umber. I was picking up straight burnt umber on my brush. And I'm going to make some uh, little marks on the cap. I don't know how to describe those other than just little marks. I just tap the brush on the uh, cap of the ornament. So you've made a few little marks there of burnt umber. And now I'm going to pick up a little bit of pure black on my brush, which is, uh, I don't need a ton of black, but just a little bit picked up will make that burnt umber even darker and we'll put in a couple of basically super dark marks on the cap. Okay, I'll let you get those on. that I am going to rinse my brush in water because I need to go from black to yellow ochre again. And I'll, ne I don't, I'll end up with a green color if I don't rinse that out. But then I'm going to really pinch and wipe that brush off so it's virtually dry again. And I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre and a small amount of white and just kind of lighten my yellow ochre a little bit. And I'm going to make some lighter marks with that lighter yellow ochre and white mixture. So you can see those that I've just tapped there on the cap. It's not gonna take you but a moment to do that. So I am cleaning out my liner brush. and I'm picking up titanium white on my liner brush. And I'm going to come back to that area where we made that white highlight on the ornament. And I'm going to put a stark white glint on there. And this is not just a dot of white. 
it's a little mark of some irregular shape. So put a glint of white on there, and then we can put another glint down here. And you see, again, it's not a dot. There's a little shape there to that. All right, I'm picking up some yellow ochre and white on my brush. And we're gonna do a number of things with this yellow ochre and white on our liner brush. I'm going to put a glint of this gold color between the pink and the dark red area. There's a little gold glint there. I'm gonna put another one down here, just inside the ornament. Right along that bottom, but it's not quite at the edge. It's just inset from the edge a tiny bit. Now I'm going to put a little of this at the bottom of the cap of the ornament. Just kind of a dotted broken line there. And we'll put a little bit on the top of the cap in a couple of places. So I'll show you those. Then I'll pick up some more white and I'll add a little bit of a highlight on the top of the cap. And I'll highlight a couple of those little marks that we made. All right, so you can see those extra little highlights that I've put on there. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush out and I'm going to pick up some of my hot pink. And I'm going to put a hot pink reflection on. It's gonna seem a little weird right now, but it will look right in just a few minutes. I'm gonna take that hot pink color and I'm going to put a reflected light mark inside the dark area at the bottom of the ornament. There, you can see that. And we're gonna do a couple of other little hot pink marks on our uh, ornament at the back of the ornament, kind of down a little bit from where we put that lime green on. We're gonna put a glint of hot pink on. You can see that little glint of hot pink on there. And then just for fun, in that area that we didn't cover with that really dark, we're gonna make a little bit of a hot pink highlight in that area. So these are just fun little glints that are on there. And then because my ornament, and I'm noticing this and it's bothering me quite a bit, but it probably hasn't, even shown up for you all. This little area here looks like my ornament has been pinched in a little bit. Like that pink is like a little belt cinching its waist. And I'm going to take some of this hot pink and I'm just going to go right along the outside edge of my ornament and make that a little bit fat right along there. So it gives that ornament a nice round edge. Okay, before we put the hanger on the ornament and do a couple of other little accents, we need to get some uh, cast shadow going and a little bit of our background in there. So I'm taking one of my brushes and I think this is the one that had the red from the ornament in it. And I'm going to pick up a little 
the burnt ember on my brush. And I'm going to start right next to the ornament and I'm going to stroke on this burnt ember. And then I'm going to wipe my brush and I'm going to scrub that color out to fill in my cast shadow. So this is going to make my shadow a little bit lighter at the outside edge of the shadow. So there it is, a little bit lighter at the outside edge of the shadow. And then I'll pick up some more burnt ember and just fill in my cast shadow. Making sure that it has a nice graceful curve to it. We're not quite done with our shadow just yet, but we don't have much more to do. Right, and Andy, just double checking, that shadow, you're painting that with yellow ochre or berry wine? I'm painting it with burnt umber. Burnt umber, thank you. Okay, the brush is the one that I had painted all of the red areas on my uh, ornament with. And then I had the other brush that I've been using with my yellow ochre. So this was okay. the brush that had the red in it. All right, so I'm gonna pick up pure black on one half of the brush and I'm going to paint that right next to the ornament. So super dark black shadow right next to the ornament. And then it's gonna fade out into our burnt umber. And this is one of those times when it's just dark against dark against dark. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult for everybody to see. Maybe you'll be able to notice that, that it is darker right up next to the ornament. Okay, we are gonna shift into big brush and high gear now. So I'm going to put out on my palette a little bit of Folk Art Thicket. And I'll also put out some more uh, burnt umber. And the reason that I'm using Thicket in the background is I want a green in the background uh, because it is the complementary color to red. So our background is contrasting and complementing our ornament. So I'm gonna pick up some thicket and some white, a little burnt umber, and yes, a little bit of black. So we've got lots of stuff going on here, but we've got a super dark gray green kind of yucky color on our brush. And I'm gonna start over here on the left side of the canvas and brush this on. And then I'm going to pick up some white and brush that in and you see what a great kind of gray green color we get. And I'm just blending and softening that in a little bit. And we will take this color right next to our ornament and very carefully paint right around the ornament. You can do this. I have no fear that you will be able to do it perfectly. And this way we can shape our ornament the way that we want to. If you need to, you can put out some more white put out any more of any color you need to while we're working on our background. We just don't want the background to, we don't want anybody to look and say, oh, you've painted a green background. Green is not the objective of the background. It's this grayish color that has a green 
tint to it. And then you can see I'm just blending that into that darker color that I started with. And we'll just continue around our ornament, making some more of this color, which is thicket plus burnt umber plus black plus white. And I just mix it on my brush and adjust it as I need to. If it's looking too gray, I can add a little bit more green to it. If it's looking too green, I can add some brown to it. And whatever color I put on, I just make sure to work it into the previous color so you don't end up with a strange stripe of a new color. So add some white and blend that in. After all that kind of tedious painting on that ornament, it's going to be fun to kind of kick loose with this more abstract color background. And I keep adding more white to it as I'm approaching the right-hand side of the canvas. And I blend that color in, pat, 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 dab, dab, dab. And then I slow down as I'm coming up to the ornament and carefully paint that in. I'm using a three-quarter inch flat brush. You could use a one-inch brush here. Don't use a tiny brush or you will be painting forever. So brush, 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 dab, 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 soften, soften, soften. And then we'll paint right around the ornament and the shadow. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, Plaid does have a great uh, Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid. Um, I teach there at least, seems like at least twice a week. Feels like sometimes I teach more than twice a week, but we do a program called Lunch and Learn, and we do that on Tuesday and Thursday at noon. And you're welcome to uh, become a part of that group if you're not already. And we in, invite you to um, post your finished paintings in the group and use the hashtag Let's paint challenge. We love to see what you've painted. So many beautiful paintings every week that we get to see. All right, so I'm just adding a little bit more of this light color and carrying it over a bit. So you could see I've got a gradient going that's lighter on the right side of the canvas and darker on the left. And we'll continue coming around the front of our cast shadow. making sure that our shadow and our background are touching one another because you can't have a floating shadow. Everything's got to be connected. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more dark color here because I'm going to move over into a darker section of the canvas. So I want to make sure that it gets darker over here. Well, that's very nice. And I think we're just a little over our, just about an hour mark. So we're doing pretty well. So just keep painting along. And then I'll show you how to do the last finishing touches on the um, ornament and we will be finished. So not very much more to do. All right, so there is my background completed. And I know that took uh, about five minutes to do that. So I'm going to give you uh, another few minutes. Uh, you know, that's not true. I'm gonna give you just a little tiny bit more time to do that and then I'm gonna move on because that's how we have to do that. Natalie is wondering if there's a reason that the background wasn't done first. It's because I wanted to keep that um, white uh, to show through the shadow and uh, the ornament as we painted it. And it's not terribly difficult. I mean, this is a simple shape to paint around. You're not having to uh, 
fill in a lot of really intricate areas. So you can do this without any problem, Natalie. I am not worried about you doing that. All right, I'm gonna give you another minute to complete your background and I'm going to dry mine so I don't get my hand in it. Ooh, I bet everybody's ready to take a deep breath after uh, painting their background. Okay, I am gonna show you the last few little details. Uh, I want to take some of my bright pink and I want to put an accent on the top of the cap over here on the right side. I'm just tapping that on. And then I'm going to tap a little bit of an accent right on the cap on its darker edge. So you can see I put a little bit of pink there and then a little bit of pink right there on that cap. Okay, now we just need to put a hanger on our um, ornament. So I'm going to rinse my liner brush and I'm going to pick up pure black, and I do need to make sure that this paint is thinned down a little bit because I will be painting a fine line. But before I paint that fine line with my thinned black, I'm going to paint a little hole. Kind of an elongated hole there. All right, and then I'm going to paint a little loop starting in that hole. Hopefully I can do this pretty well. I'm gonna make a little loop that's gonna come out of that hole. It's gonna go around and it's going to come back on the ornament, just like that. But we're not done. We have just a little tiny last bit of highlighting to do on that loop. So I'm going to make sure that loop is dry so my highlights show up. Okay, and I will use a little white plus yellow ochre. Very, very pale. And I'm going to put a little broken bit of light on there. Not a solid line. But you can see there's a little broken line. And then I will also put a little bit more of a highlight on the cap with just a little bit of white. All right, and that is our shiny bright ornament. So I want to, sorry, Emma. I was gonna say that's beautiful. And Natalie actually has a good question real quick before we end it. She wants to know if you wanted to do this ornament, but instead of red, make it blue. Do you have any color? Um... Sure, I would probably um, use some of the um, folk art multi-surface uh, Prussian blue. So Prussian blue, uh, maybe use a little bit of aqua uh, for some of the lighter color there. And then uh, Prussian blue plus black to make that color even darker. But if you really, really scrub that Prussian blue out or heaven forbid, um, thin it a little bit, you'll get a really, really beautiful uh, dark blue ornament. All right, 
So let me see if I can show you something here and hopefully it'll show up. I have not varnished this because we wanted to get a good photograph of it, but I do want to show you what it would look like if you varnished it. So I'm just gonna take some water on my hand and go over the ornament and hopefully it's going to look brighter than it did without uh, that water on it. The, the uh, varnish really does bring out the color of the ornament. So do, when your paint is good and dry, varnish it with uh, a nice high gloss varnish. And I think you'll be very, very happy with your efforts that you've put in tonight. So uh, this is my last Michaels class for this year. Um, so uh, as we mentioned earlier, Emma will be here teaching a couple of Christmas ornaments uh, next Monday night. So I wanna wish you all a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And so, as I said, that's our uh, shiny bright ornament for this evening. So thanks for uh, watching and make sure to tune in next week uh, to follow Emma's class.